Welcome to today's information session for the Certificate 3 in School-Based Education Support. This information is for the course that will commence in the South at our Bounty Street campus in Clarence. During today's presentation, we will provide you with an overview of some general information about the course so that you can decide if this is the right course for you. We will explore the qualification, the role of the teacher assistant, the course structure, delivery, and how you will learn, assessment requirements, as well as skills and attributes required for success in this course. We will also provide an overview of the entry requirements, fees and credit transfer information, recognition of prior learning, the application process, and student supports available at TASTAFE. At the end of today's presentation, we will then have a question and answer session. Please post your questions throughout the presentation via the Q&A function, and we will respond to these at the end. Course information. The Certificate 3 in School-Based Education Support, CHC 30221 qualification, provides the skills and knowledge required for the role of assisting and supporting school-aged students and teaching staff from kindergarten to year 12. This can be in a range of education settings, including public, independent schools and community education. The role in schools is often referred to as a teacher assistant or sometimes teacher aide or education support worker. The teacher assistant role. Teacher assistants have an important role in supporting schools to meet the needs of a range of students. This includes preparation of teaching support materials, assisting with general classroom and non-teaching duties, supporting and guiding students in their learning under supervision, and supporting students with disabilities and additional needs. The course structure. The course is full time, at least three full days or equivalent, and is designed to be completed in one academic year. There are 15 units of study involved in the course. The 15 units consist of 10 core units and five electives. The electives have already been selected. It is a mixed learning model with a combination of in-class workshops, which will be face-to-face -face in your region, independent online learning on Canvas and a work placement. The core units are as follows. On the left in orange, you will see the code of the unit and on the right is the title of the unit. So this gives you a little bit of an overview of the kind of topics you will be learning about. So it is about working with diverse people, meet legal and ethical obligations in an education support environment, contribute to the planning and implementation of educational programs, contribute to student education in all developmental domains, support the development of literacy and oral language skills, support the development of numeracy skills, support students with additional needs in the classroom, contribute to the health, safety and well-being of all students, work effectively with students and colleagues and support responsible student behaviour. The elective units are search and access online information, set up and sustain learning areas, provide support to students with autism spectrum disorder, identify and respond to children and young people at risk, and provide first aid in an education and care setting. It's great to see some questions starting to come in via the Q&A function. Thank you. Remember, we'll be answering these at the end of this information session. Course delivery. Online learning using Canvas, which is TASTAFE's learner management system, so be at approximately 12 hours per week. Workshops of one workshop per week of five hours. This will be held on a Monday. Work placement will be one day per week during terms four in 2023, terms one and two in 2024. This can be on either a Wednesday or a Thursday. The course start date is the 26th of July, 2023, and finishes the week ending the 5th of July, 2024. A course calendar, including timetable, will be provided at the beginning of the course. Assessments are due at regular intervals throughout the course. How you will learn. You'll use a combination of learning. This will include textbook readings, videos, blog posts and articles, websites, discussion points, learning activities, group work, 
and of course, learning while on the job during your work placement. The textbook. The textbook for this course is Supporting Education, third edition, and the author is Karen Kearns, the publisher's Cengage 2019. This is an essential textbook that will be used regularly during the course. Limited copies are available on short term loan from the TAS TAFE libraries. It can be purchased from online bookstores or ordered from local bookstores at a cost of approximately $90. You will need to organise the purchase of your textbook yourself, ready for the start of the course. Work practical placement. All students are required to complete a minimum of 20 days practical placement unless they are already employed as a teacher assistant. Practical placement starts early second term, one day a week. Practical placements will be organised and supported by your TAS TAFE teacher. It is preferred that placements are not undertaken at your child's school. Assessment. To demonstrate competence with a CP result in each unit, we'll use a combination of questions, questions demonstrating underpinning knowledge, scenarios are questions relating to workplace situations, performance tasks, written report of practical tasks undertaken on your work placement, and other. Practical assessment. You'll also be assessed by a TASTAF teacher on work or practical placement who will complete an observation record as evidence of the practical application of your knowledge and skills on the job. Practical assessments may also occur in a workshop based scenario. Assessment. Written assessment expectations. Assessments are to be clearly written and detailed responses in a paragraph form. We expect accurate spelling, punctuation and grammar, basic referencing of information sources and all assessments need to be word processed and submitted online through the Canvas Learner Management System. Personal considerations. Ask yourself these questions to decide if this course is for you. Do you have an interest and enjoyment in supporting children to learn? Do you have the tolerance, patience and tact necessary for this role? Can you accept direction, supervision and feedback in a positive manner? Can you work both independently and as part of a team? Do you have the ability to be flexible and adapt quickly to change? Do you have the time to commit to full-time study, including a practical placement? Skills and attributes for success. Sound digital literacy skills and access to devices and the internet. Excellent reading, writing and oral communication skills for appropriate modelling and guiding student learners. Motivation, organisation and problem solving skills. A willingness to contribute ideas, learn independently and with others. An ability to read and interpret written information independently. And the literacy skills to write accurately in paragraphs. Course entry requirements. Requirements for all applicants to undertake the basic knowledge skills builder, the BKSB, to confirm they have the required literacy and numeracy LN skills to work at an Australian core skills framework, exit level two or higher, prior to enrolling into the course. The ability to communicate effectively in English. A current registration to work with vulnerable people with a volunteer status. You must have access to a device with internet and email and Microsoft Word. The capacity to commit to full time study and the practical placement requirements of this course. Pricing for this course. The fees of this course vary depending on individual circumstances. At the time of recording, the approximate fees for this course are as follows. Subsidised fees are $1,750. Concession fees $390 and a commercial fees are $8,920. Please access the fee calculator online to check which fees you would be subject to. As well as your course fees, there are some additional costs for this course. These include a TASTAFE polo top for your work placement. This is approximately $45. You will also be required to have your registration to work with vulnerable people this is approximately $20 and the course textbook 
which is approximately $90. Credit transfers. If this qualification contains units you have completed previously at either TAS, TAFE or elsewhere, you may be eligible for a credit transfer. To qualify for a credit transfer, the unit code of your completed unit must be exactly the same as the unit code you are enrolling in. If the credit transfer is notified prior to enrolment, it may reduce the course fee. Credit transfers notified after enrolment may not reduce course fees. You will need to provide a statement of attainment to be issued a credit transfer if you have studied at another registered training organisation. Calling off date. The calling off date for this course will be the 3rd of October. This marks 20% of the scheduled training. If you withdraw prior to the calling off date, you'll be able to secure a full refund of the tuition fees. If you withdraw after the calling off date, you will have incurred the full course debt and no longer be eligible for a fee waiver or credit, except in exceptional circumstances. circumstances. Recognition of prior learning, RPL. Recognition of prior knowledge and skills, RPL, is available for this qualification. Enrolled RPL students are not required to attend workshops. Assessments are completed one-on-one -on -one with the TAS TAFE teachers using specific RPL assessments. You may be eligible for this pathway if you are currently working as a teacher assistant with a minimum of two years experience full-time or equivalent, either via a contract or as a permanent employee you have continuing employment in 2023. If you would like to speak with someone about this pathway, please email or call the Early Childhood and Education team. Details are at the end of this presentation. Please indicate which region you are in and you will be contacted by an education support team member. The application process. Applications will open on the 29th of May, 2023. Visit our website and go to the Apply and Enrol page and watch our Applying at TASTAFE presentation. After you have submitted your application, please keep an eye out on your emails as we will advise the outcome of your application or we may request further information from you. Student support. If you need assistance or support during your time at TASTAFE, please don't hesitate to contact one of our student counsellors or disability liaison officers for help. We offer a range of student services, including support with additional literacy and numeracy, study skills, advice about financial assistance, counselling, disability support and career planning. Call 1300 655 307 to make an appointment or visit the student support section on our website. So to recap, the key dates for this intake, the online applications open on the 29th of May, 2023. The course will commence on the 26th of July, 2023. The calling off date for this course is the 3rd of October, 2023. And the course end date is the 5th of July, 2024. That concludes our formal presentation now let's answer your questions. Hi everybody. Um, we have had a few questions in the Q&A, Ali. Um, so can we just go over what the um, study requirements are and when work placement will commence and how often work placement is? I think some people would like to organise childcare. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the requirements for the course are the workshop, which is on Monday, and that would usually run from 9.30 until 2.30. So people with childcare requirements would need to um, look at a Monday for childcare. Placements will be on either a Wednesday or a Thursday, and that is by negotiation with us um, as we go into the course so we can have some chats about that. So if you're looking for childcare, um, look for a Wednesday or a Thursday for the placement day um, and then let us know. So we can be flexible around that um, in terms of the day. The study requirements for the course 
we say to do or to set aside at least 12 hours um, of study time. So this can be for things like assessments. It can be for online viewings in Canvas, online readings, um, if there's any blog articles, those sorts of things. So about 12 hours on top of the placement and on top of the class. It is exactly. actually, it's it's not a TAS TAFE requirement, is it, Ali, that work placement is, is done? It's actually a requirement for the qualification yeah, that you have yeah. to do at least 100 hours in the yeah. workplace in order yep. to get your qualification. So Absolutely. that's why we actually organise that. And as we've said, we prefer you not to do it in your child's school, just because sometimes that has caused issues in the past. Yep. Um, and again, um, we will organise the work placement, but we do consult with you. Um, and if you, you might have a school that you would like to go to and we will talk to you about that. Yeah. Um, so but we do organise the placements. Yeah, so the placements generally what we do at the beginning of um, our course is we pop out a preference sheet for everyone to complete to say um, the area they live in or where they would like to have their placement so people can they can select a school or an area, and then we do our very best <laughs> to try and accommodate each of those. Um, but of course, we have to also ensure that the school is happy to host um, as well. So there can be, sometimes schools just don't have capacity to supervise an additional um, student. So they may say, not at this time, um, but we do our best to try and accommodate everybody's preferences. I've actually had someone ask Ali, I've applied for relief teacher assistant work with DSIP and they require that I change my working with vulnerable people from volunteering to employment. Yes. Will that prevent me from entering the course? Absolutely not. No, no, that's fine. And often people do change from being a volunteer to yeah. um, employment during the term of the course because sometimes you can be offered some casual work. Yeah. Um, so it could be that, you know, you you decide to change it. So it, there is yeah. a higher cost, I think. Yes. Um, about 120, yeah, so I'm not sure. So don't I'm quote not, me on that. But it, it is a little bit more if you're paying for, for one that um, allows you to work. Yes, so we have the minimum requirement, which is the volunteer status. Um, but if you're working, you do have to have um, the employment status, which is a bit dearer. Yeah, but for our course, you only need the minimum. Yeah. Someone's asked if, um, if they can't attend class if they are sick. Um, yeah. Basically, we, we just require that you let us know that you're yeah. not going to be able to attend. Um, we do have an online um, a classroom management system with materials on there and you do have your textbook. So it could well be that you might be able to work from home. Obviously, if you've got a long term illness, um, it could be that we, we really need to discuss that with you and work out how we can support you through that. Yeah. Someone's asked, Ali, can I attend class on another day? Uh, unfortunately, um, no, <laughs> we have only got the one workshop for um, this intake, so it will be on a Monday. And obviously so, we have to book in um, rooms to room, teach in, yeah. so that, that becomes something we have to, to organise on our timetable. Yeah. Um, end date for applications, it's usually about um, 10 days to two weeks. Um, if we've not had enough applications, yeah. then we usually unlock it um, and we go to um, we, we go to people on the waiting list. But it is yeah. better to get in quickly if you are keen it does and then up. you really make sure you've secured a place. Yeah, I think uh, the maximum enrolments for this intake is 30 and then anyone after 30 would be on a wait list. It's my understanding. And we're very conscious that we didn't offer at the beginning of the year here in Clarence because we ran a, uh, we ran an extra course um, last year. So we have had a lot of inquiries about, yeah. you know, were we running a mid-year? So I think you would be better to get in sooner rather than later. Yeah. Anna's asked, can the online learning at home be done at any time during the week? Yes, it can. So it's a um, self-paced online. Um, the only thing would be if we had a online um, a session online, if you know if the teacher was sick or something. Um, but usually, if that's something that happens, we would record that and make that available as well. So yeah, pretty much any time um, you can do your own self-paced learning at home through Canvas. 
Yeah. Uh, Sophie has asked, does TAFE have a childcare facility? Unfortunately, we don't have our own, but there is a childcare centre just down the road from the Bounty Street campus, which is um, Flagstaff Gully Childcare Centre. Um, there's also one close by in Bell Reeve called Green Leaves, and there's also one just up the road called Cambridge Road Play and Learn. So there are a few centres quite close to here, but not one on campus. Great question though. Uh, Anna's asked, Ali, can we have any input into where our placements are? Absolutely, yes. So we ask for your preferences at the beginning of the um, course and we do our best to try and meet those. Yeah. Uh, has also asked, good questions, Anna. Uh, where do we undertake the BKSB? So that's through an online link. So you undertake that at home. Um, and the results come through to us. So we just need people to be at exit level two, working um, working at exit level three. And Jean has asked, I've finished some of my units with another TAFE, um, but I've not got the transcript yet. Can I get some money, um, a reduction um, of my fees when I enrol? Uh, so that would be a great question to send through to the email address that you can see on your screen now. So the early childhood and education at tastafe.tas.edu.au. Um, we will require the evidence of the completed units. So um, you would need to make sure that you have that evidence before applying for a credit transfer. And they need to be full, full units completed, not partially completed. If you have your USI number, you should be able to get on and actually see what units you've completed um, if the organisation that you did the study with has published them there. But that's another way of finding your results if the organisation is taking a bit of a long time to get the transcript to you. Yep. Uh, someone's asked, uh, for the work placement, will you be placed in a school near your home suburb location? Absolutely, we try to. Um, so that's part of what we pop on the request, the preference request form at the beginning. So we'll, we'll ask if you have any specific school that you would like to attend, or if there's no specific school, then um, an area that is easy for you to get to and things like that. So yeah, we try to accommodate um, people's requests as best we can. Someone's just asked when placement starts. So term four, what term sort of date would four. that be, Ali? Uh, so that I believe is the beginning of October, term four. Um, we probably would not go for the very first week back of term, um, but most likely the second week back of and term And for anyone four. who's got children, we do have TAFE holidays aligned to the school holidays so that, you know, that's makes life a little bit easier for parents. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but so basically term four, um, October, and then it would be a Wednesday or a Thursday that you would need to commit to. Yeah. And it's a full school day as well. Uh, the numeracy and literacy tests are, as I say, we will send you a link and there is no extra cost. They're part of your enrolment at TAS TAFE. Um, are we able to do the placement at our children's school at all? Um, it's a large school where I would not be in my child's class. That's probably something to discuss um, on a personal level with your teacher, but in general, we recommend against it um, simply because of it can potentially be a conflict of interest. Um, you would most likely have connections with other families in the school, um, children, within your child's class may have siblings in the class that you're working in. So it can just sometimes get a bit grey. Um, so we we recommend that people don't um, go to their own child's school just so that we don't have that potential for conflict of interest there and you can keep your professional boundaries really clear. Somebody's asked, can I work as a volunteer during the course? I'm just wondering Ali, if that means doing extra days if they wanted to do in the school. I'm not quite sure what that means. Probably. So if if that question is meaning volunteering, absolutely. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. Some people also do take on um, paid relief work during the course. So that's also an option too. So yes, I guess is the answer. You can take on additional volunteer work so long as you're able to 
ensure that you're keeping up with your course requirements would be my um, cover on that one. <laughs> As somebody's asked, is the Monday class at Clarence campus going to be the same for 2024 to plan ahead? Should I not get a place in the course for 2023? Uh, so if you didn't get a place in this course, next year's course, I believe will be on a Tuesday um, from my understanding. Joe, is that correct? Yes, yeah. yeah. Usually we run this course on a Tuesday. The reason we're running on a Monday is because at the moment we've got a, a class running on the Tuesday, um, an ongoing class from last year, um, and this new class will therefore run on, in a different classroom. Uh, sorry, in the same classroom, but on the Monday. So yes, next year it will be Tuesday, this year it is Monday. Uh, but for this intake, if you start on the Monday and you will continue through on Mondays until we complete. Uh, three days of the week will I need to come to campus. So remember, it's just one day a week to come on campus at Clarence. And then from um, October, you will be doing one day a week work placement, but you don't need to be on campus three days a week. Um, and school holidays will basically be the normal um, Department of DSIP now, and used to be Department of Education, but it will be the normal school holidays and they are published online. Um, you can access the school holidays for 2023 and 2024. Is this course being offered in Burnie either this July or in February of 2024? Not this July, um, but I believe there is an intake happening up in the northwest next year. Yeah, and yeah. in the north too. Yeah, we usually run in Burnie and in Devonport, um, and so it's very likely that in in 2024 we'll, we will be offering in both those those campuses. So the information sessions for next year's courses will occur later in the year, usually in November. Um, so if if now isn't a great time for you, keep an eye out for those next info sessions. Yep, so basically just um, reiterating just one day face to face on campus at Clarence. Uh, the course is not going to be offered in Launceston mid-year um, for various reasons um, that I won't go into, but um, we hope to offer in Launceston in 2024. Uh, Ali, thanks for a great overview. Is this qualification essential prior to working as a relief teacher or can casual work in schools be obtained without this qualification? Uh, so this qualification is not required as a um, prerequisite for teacher assistant in a school. So yeah, you can go and work in a school um, without the qualification. Absolutely. Yeah. It does, however, <laughs> provide you with a really good foundation um, or foundational knowledge to understand how to work well with students and support individual learning needs and gives you a bit of depth um, of understanding. So I would recommend it, but it is not essential. No. And I, I have had a statue, you and I taught a student, Ali, who did yeah. a, an early childhood course and then yeah. went to work as um, an education support worker and she found it quite difficult. She said she yeah. wished she'd done the education support course as it would have prepared her um, for the classroom um, much more. So I, I think it is it's a good it's a good move to make for yeah. your career. Uh, is there any exemption to the two year minimum working as a TA, TA already rule? For the RPL, I'm guessing that is. I think so, I would think. Yeah, uh, look, two years is the minimum uh, because we just like to ensure that people have really got that depth of um, understanding and practice. So for that RPL component, we do recommend two years. You have to collect quite a bit of evidence to yeah. show that you are able to do the, the tasks that we're requesting. Um, so it's really, yeah, it, it is essential. We've, we've yeah. worked that out from experience. It's not yeah. just an arbitrary rule. We've actually um, made it because we've based it on our experience. Yeah. Uh, do we complete the BKSB before applying or after being accepted? The BKSB link will come through as part of the enrolment process. So you'll um, submit your enrolment and then you'll get your link and until you've finished your BKSB then your enrolment will not be complete so you must complete that before the enrolment um, is done so you'd start the process receive the link and then finish the enrolment 
Uh, George has asked about accommodation. George, we do have accommodation at Clarence Campus, uh, student accommodation. Um, basically, if you contact us via that email, um, we can put you in touch with somebody if that's what you're interested in, in looking at. If we do the pre-voc course prior to the Cert 3 in Ed support, um, when can that commence or can we do it at the same time? I think that's probably a question if we can answer personally. Um, so probably, probably yeah. if you if you um, it, talk to us on that email and we can have one of our teachers can have a chat with you about that. So there is this information, Joe, um, that has come through for the study start. I'm not sure if that's what the pre-voc is referring to. So they do have some dates already set up for study start. So study starts uh, a bit of a pre um, course set you up right if you're coming back from you know having not studied for a little while they this is a, a pre-course runs from the 17th of July through to the 20th of July um, and it's either at Campbell Street or Clarence so you can seek further information from this the address on the screen there if and probably something. a good, like it says, probably going on the TASTAFE um, courses, having a look through those um, and just searching for study start or again, contacting us on that email and we can have a chat to you about it. Yeah. Thank you. It's That's a really, very, very yeah. good questions yeah. coming in, actually. It's great. Really good questions. Have uh, we someone, covered them all, Joe? No. Nope. I've got a few more. <laughs> great. Um, Will having a level six diploma in social services from New Zealand be of any help in regards to credit transfers? Uh, we'd need to look at that um, based on the course codes. So if you email through to the um, early childhood address that I can put up now, um, if you email a copy of your certificate through, then we can have a look at that and see which units you would get credit transfer for and provide you with further information. Um, Francesca, I've recently resigned from an early childhood education and care role. I'm working with vulnerable people. Card expires in November. Will I need to apply for a new one before the course starts? Yes, please. You'd need that before you go on placement um, and it would need to obviously remain current for the entirety of placement. Yes, and given that you go, yeah. you'll be going out in September and sometimes the, uh, working with vulnerable people cards can take a little while to be processed. So it would be worth applying for one um, definitely before you, you start work placement, just in case I've heard sometimes it can take a couple of months um, and then other people have said it's come through in a couple of weeks. So it's it, it's a little bit on the volume of people that they've got going through. Yeah. Uh, is it necessary to be in the face to face class on Monday? I live in Burnie. Um, or will I need to wait till the course is offered in the Northwest? Uh, I would suggest you wait till it's offered in the Northwest because we won't necessarily be able to support placement for you um, with our Hobart teachers doing visits. So yeah, that would be my recommendations. Uh, will work placement still be Wednesday and Thursday for 2024 as well? Yes. Yes, we'll keep that for the um, same day for our intake. And I believe that next year's intake would have the same, the Wednesday, Thursday also. And what about the work placement hours, Ali? What would students be expected to do per day? That's from Tanya. Yeah, sure. So um, typically people would do, you know, a nine till three or an 8.30 till 2.30. So we say six hours, um, but there's a half hour lunch break in there too. So expect to be at the school for six hours. Thanks, Ali. Um, Anna, if unsuccessful, basically the next intake for the South, we would expect to be in February 2024. Correct. Yep. Um, so childcare basically it would be Monday and a Wednesday or Thursday, if I'm right, yeah. Ali, isn't it? It's not three yeah. days. You would need to um, have Monday and a Wednesday or Monday yep. and a Thursday. That's but we'll have a, we can have a chat to you about that, but it's really only two days face to face and then the rest of the time will be online, which obviously you can work a little bit around your own schedule. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Do you have to complete the course within one year? What if you miss too much learning time? Then what happens? Is it marked as a fail or does TAFE support you to help catch up or have a time extension? 
Uh, so again, that's probably a bit of a case by case basis, but generally speaking, we try to support our learners as best we can. Um, so we need to just ensure that those communications are continuing. So if we're not hearing from you and you're not submitting any assessments and um, not showing up to class, then we would obviously have quite a few concerns. However, if you're keeping in touch, letting us know um, that you need extensions within reason, uh, then we will do our best to support you to continue within the course. Um, and within exceptional circumstances, there can be opportunities to extend the end dates, but again, case by case basis, and that has to be confirmed through our manager. Do you know if the 2024 course will be fee free also? I'm not aware that this is fee free, know. is it, Ali? I'm um, not sure. I haven't. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm this sorry. has changed quite rapidly. Um, so it was my understanding that education support was not fee free. But just to check, um, if you go on the website and you look up fee free, it gives a list of the courses. It's generally been priority areas where they're really struggling to get workers. But it could this could change in 2024 if it's identified that we, we need um, support um, in school. So, but it's it's not my understanding that at the moment it is a free free course. No, yeah, I don't think this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one isn't. It's basically the um, early childhood um, is fee free, the certificate three, um, and the certificate four in community services. But they're all up on the on the website, and you can scroll through and have a look. And if that's important to you, there may there might be another course that you feel you could do if it was fee free. So it's really up to you. Um, if you're away on overseas for these dates of study start, can this be done online? So I think there was someone who was going on holiday, Ali, and they'd be away till August the eighth. Oh, for the oh, okay. Um, Beginning. Uh, oh, look, it's not ideal um, because but during we have this, had it before, haven't we? It's, yeah. You've just got to be quite conscientious and really um, try and catch up because you know we do all the induction, we show you how yeah. to use Canvas, um, it, you get to make the group, um, so it's not ideal, but it it can be managed. But and you've just got to be really really keen proactive. and motivated to yeah proactive to pick it all up when you when you get back yeah uh, how is the workload of the assignments will there be exams or group assignments uh, so no we don't do exams um, and generally speaking it's individual assignments and assessments we don't assess um, through group assessments at all so it's individual work yeah, you certainly will work no together exam. in class and you might oh, work yes. together on a little scenario that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to assessments, you are working on your own. Yep. And individual submissions for assessments. Um, and there is a workload. I mean, it, it is a it's classed as a full time course. So mm -hmm. even though and sometimes people think, well, I'm only on campus one day a week, so it must be a part time course. But it actually isn't because of, there is an expectation that you will be working um, online and doing your assessments and your learning um, in periods that work around your your lifestyle. So if you're a parent, could well be you get the children off to bed and then you do a work bit of work in the evening. You've got children's sport on Saturday. So you may you may well do perhaps a bit of work on Sunday afternoon when maybe they're they're out seeing their grandparents or something. So it can be quite flexible, which is why we've set it up like that. But there is that commitment for that day of face to face and a day of work placement. I think that's all the questions. I hope we've answered them all, um, but please, if we haven't, or you feel you've got a more personal um, thing that you would like to ask about, please email us or call us, um, and then one of our teachers can can talk to you. Thank you for some great questions. Yeah, um, were they, were, they were really good, really good. and I'm sure they've clarified things for, for everybody. For everyone, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for attending and uh, the recording of this webinar should be up on the website shortly. Thanks, Thanks Joe. everyone. Goodbye. Thanks everyone. Bye.